Now, if you've been living under a rock, you might have missed out that legendary motorcycle company Yesdi has been brought back to life by Classic Legends, which is a Mahindra company that also revived Java. Not only are they bringing the company back to life, they're coming out with all guns blazing. They're coming out with a scrambler, which is this, which is a segment first. And also they're coming out with an adventure bike, which is going to bring the fight right to the 390 ADV and the Himalayan from Royal Enfield. But I'm here to check out this, the Yesdi Roadster. This is where classic legends are bringing the fight to proper cash crops, like the Honda CB350 Highness and the 350 lineup of Royal Enfield. Now I'm here to see if all the noise is worthy for the Yesdi Roadster, or is it just all bark, no bite? Java was a Czech brand brought to India by Farooq K. Irani and Rustam S. Irani. Yesdi was an Indianization of the Java brand, built to greater standards of ruggedness. The sporty nature of these motorcycles and their nimble handling created a cult following. They were cool, quick and easy to maintain. How Java liked to call it, the forever bike. Yesdi built an empire like no other. With a cult following for their legendary name that's going strong till date, Irani and Irani had created dependable, affordable bikes with the ruggedness required to tackle Indian roads and be an absolute delight to ride. But after almost 40 years of life, unfortunately, with the production of two-stroke engines being banned, YSD was abruptly forced to shut shop in India. And that's why the new Roadster has all the hype. But now Classic Legends understood the assignment and knew that if they had to bring back a legendary Roadster manufacturer, they had to make one themselves. And that too, for today's standards. And I'm glad to report that up to standards it definitely is. All of the Yesdi's fit and finish are sublime. And as a first impressions, they do catch quite a lot of attention. But I would rather say they're not desperate in any way. You get the Roadster in two variants. This is the dark variant, which is uh, given the blackout treatment, some bar and mirrors and a short fly screen for a badass bobber kind of look. However, you can also get a chrome variant, which everything over here turns out to be chrome, like the engine casing and the exhaust. You get handlebar mirrors, a tall fly screen and a more touring setup for touring. Looking at the Roadster in the flesh, the bike is very well proportioned. Starting from the rear, the fender looks quite big, but it is not big enough to make the rear tire look small. The Roadster is the only offering to get alloy wheels in the entire lineup of uh, YesDs. And in my opinion, it looks really nice. The air box looks like a piece of art, which to be honest, me really likey. But there are a lot of parts in the bike, uh, which I would say me not likey. Like the front headlight looks quite small and with the proportions of the bike, it makes me feel some type of way. And uh, also the exhaust makes a little weird burble while uh, letting off the throttle, which doesn't sound very healthy in my opinion. So it triggers a little bit of the OCD in me. The Roadster comes with a 334cc liquid-cooled single, which is derived from the Java Perak, which, as you can see, has the same Y-shaped dual exhaust ports with a single valve, and uh, it pushes out 29 bhp and 29 newton meters of torque. As you can notice, that is a bump over the Java, which is because of a new set of cams and a new throttle body, a bigger throttle body. Moreover, this little engine has been tuned, this specific engine in the Roadster has been tuned to have a flatter torque curve, which means the power band is a little narrower and most of the torque is available throughout the rev band. Mmm, sounds appetizing. On the fly, the Java-derived 334cc single offers great punch in the first half of the rev band, which make it quite enjoyable to ride along the city. The gearing is also set up for city riding, which lets you enjoy that torque at all times. And trust me, when I say torque, I mean dollops of it. 
The engine, with the way it delivers its power, makes you feel like you're riding something bigger, to be honest. The larger throttle body and the new set of cams is definitely noticeable when you pin the throttle too. The surge of the Roadster feels significant, but I wouldn't call it aggressive. Stomp on the brakes and the Roadster's 320mm front discs with floating calipers offer a decent bite and instill lots of confidence while braking too. The 240mm rear discs offer decent amounts of braking too, which all in all offer a great stopping power in the Roadster, which is always great news on a bike. The ABS is non-switchable, but I'm not complaining at all. This ABS system, when deployed, does an amazing job at stopping the brakes from locking. The Roadster's telescopic front shocks and gas-charged rear twin shocks are set on the stiffer side. However, the rear is preload adjustable up to 100mm, which should make your life easier if the roads you want to take are on the bumpier side. But if you're going to be gliding on the highway for long miles, the Roadster is quite solid at higher speeds. Match that with a super comfy upright riding position, you're weirdly left with a really nice city stormer and a great tourer. Swing your leg over the Roadster and you are welcome in a very comfortable spot. Uh, the foot pegs are quite low, I'm 5'10 and uh, I have quite a lot of place to move. The handlebars are nice and close to me, so my arms and my elbows are nice and low, my shoulders are super relaxed and my spine is nice and upright. So I can be here all day and I can be really aggressive because I have quite a lot of leverage with the handlebars and it is a very nice position to be in on the city. The Roadster comes with a single, round, central LCD display instrument cluster. The revs encompass the rest of the content like the speedo, odometer and the fuel gauge. You also get a gear indicator and a digital clock at the bottom of the display. Yes, they decided to use a black and white display to maintain the minimalist philosophy. The display in terms of size is decently visible. However, while riding under direct sunlight, I noticed the display to be slightly dim and illegible. Other than that, the layout of the cluster is spot on and everything is fairly easy to gauge with just a glance. All in all, Yesdi have done a stellar job in finding themselves a niche spot in a really, really competitive segment, which is the 300 to 350 cc segment, namely which has the 350 Meteor and the Honda CB350 Highness. What yes, they have playing for themselves is the pedigree that backs it. I think they have done a stellar job in bringing it back to life and giving us a good product. What do you guys think and how do you guys think this fares against its really cut cutthroat competition? If you're interested in getting yourself a Yesdi or a Java, check out Shakti Automobiles. They're located in Baner and they were purchased enough to let us borrow a bike from them. Thank you so much for Shakti Automobiles to give us a bike. And if you want to test ride any Yesdi or Java, check out Shakti Automobiles. I left the contact details down in the description. Do check them out. That's all for today. You've been watching The Drivers Up. Thank you so much for watching.